Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is Vitamin D. How much is too much? My name is Abuzar Habibini. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, and sport nutrition. Today I'm going to open up discussion about vitamin D. How much is too much? This small presentation is going to be three parts. In part one, I'm going to show you how your body makes vitamin D. In part two, we talk about blood levels and toxicity. And in part three, we talk about basically sources of vitamin D3. And I'm going to come back later on with another video about the benefits of vitamin D and interactions. Okay, let me show you how your body makes vitamin D. You see, in your skin, you have this 7-dehydrocholesterol. 7-dehydrocholesterol in your skin under the influence of ultraviolet type B from sun ray uh, will convert to pre-vitamin D. Pre-vitamin D will convert to cold calciferol by heat in the skin. Then cold calciferol will be carried to the liver and your liver is going to convert a cold calciferol to this 25 hydroxy vitamin D3. Then 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 will be carried to the kidneys and your kidneys will convert that one to 125 dehydroxy vitamin D3. Basically 125 uh, dehydroxy vitamin D3 is the active form of uh, a vitamin D in the body. Actually we have another uh, form of vitamin D. It's called vitamin D2. I'm going to put in here uh, vitamin D2, uh, which comes usually I'm going to put in here, which comes from plant sources uh, such as mushroom. Its other name is ergo calciferol. It's going to convert to 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 in the liver. In fact, vitamin D2, which comes from plants, and vitamin D3, in terms of biological activity, they are pretty much the same. And your liver actually can activate both of them very well equally. So, uh, cold calciferol, which is called vitamin D3, is made uh, in your skin. And also, cold calciferol comes from uh, food sources. I'm going to put in here foods such as cod liver oil and fish. I'm going to talk later and also supplements, okay, supplements. When you are having vitamin D pills, usually they are uh, called uh, calciferol, okay. When they are measuring your vitamin D level, they're gonna check this. So when you go to see your doctor and they are, are going to check your vitamin D level, they're gonna check 25, hydroxy vitamin D3. They do not check 125, even though this is the active form, but they don't check this one. They check sometimes uh, in rare occasions, and if they check it, usually they check for research purposes, but usually for clinical purpose, you go to your uh, family doctor, they're gonna check 25 hydroxy vitamin D3. They do not check the active form of vitamin D in the blood for two reasons. This vitamin D3 in the body, the active form of vitamin uh, D, has actually a very short half-life. Uh, this one has a half-life about 15 hours, right? But 25 hydroxy vitamin D3, this one has a longer half-life. I'm going to put in here a half-life is about two to, three, two to three weeks. So. 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 is the best marker of vitamin uh, D3 status in the body, not this one. Why? Because this one has a short half life, 15 hours, and also 125 dehydroxy vitamin D3 is tightly regulated by uh, basically other hormones such as PTH, phosphate, and calcium. This is why 
when they are checking y demand d level they are going to check 25 hydroxy y demand d3 let's go with blood levels and toxicity For this presentation, I have used valid medical books, reliable websites, and some articles. And I will list all of them in the description of this video, and hopefully you can check them out later by yourself. The most famous and valid textbook in medicine is called Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine. Let me show you the book. This is the book, edition 20, 2018. Usually every three to four years, uh, new edition will come out according to the book that I showed you and also according to NIH National Institutes of Health there is a no consensus but let's keep in mind that this is important based on NIH and the most famous textbook in medicine there is a no consensus about optimal blood levels of vitamin D adequacy for bone health and cutoff points they are extremely variable. When checking uh, your vitamin D level, they're gonna check it either in nanomole per liter or nanogram per ml, and you can convert them definitely easily, you know, one to another. Even though there is no universal agreement about optimal levels of vitamin uh, D among experts, however, uh, in most countries, uh, they consider 75 to 250 nanomole per liter with a normal range. And if you convert that one to nanogram, you're going to get 30 to 100. How you could convert? 75 divided by 2.5, you're going to get this. In Canada, we use 75 to 250 ml, and in the US, they use 30 to 100 nanogram per ml. And if your vitamin D level drops to below 50 nanomole per liter or below 20 nanogram per ml, then you will be labeled as vitamin D deficient. What about toxicity? According to NIH, if your vitamin D level, I'm going to put in here, if your vitamin D level reaches to 500 to 6 hundred nanomole per liter you may develop symptoms of toxicity and if we convert that one to nanogram you're gonna get 200 to 240 nanogram per ml so if your vitamin D level reaches to 500 600 nanomole per liter or 200 to 240 nanogram per ml, you may show symptoms of vitamin D toxicity. And the symptoms of vitamin D toxicity different is going to be uh, the symptoms of having too much calcium in your system. Would be symptoms uh, like you lose your appetite, you're going to pee a lot, constipation. Okay, so but definitely that's why you see from 250 to 500 definitely is, we have over there definitely basically a uh, uh, long gap what about dose uh, vitamin D okay we have something it's called RDA RDA stands for recommended dietary allowance for vitamin D uh, they have basically agreed uh, 600 to 800 IU basically per day actually this is way low this is why some experts they call RDA recommended death allowance it is too low and according to the book that I showed you Harrison principles of internal uh, medicine the book says uh, upper limit for vitamin D is 4,000 IU per day Again, the same textbook that I showed you, I'm giving the address on page 29, 21. It says, if you take, so this is upper limit 4,000, and it says if you take 40,000 IU a day, 
you may develop symptoms of toxicity. You see, from 4,000 a day to 40,000 a day, we have developed over the long gap. And one more thing, the most famous textbook in pharmacology, it's called Goodman and Gilman. Every medical doctor, every pharmacist, they know this book. And that book, it says, if your vitamin, if you take 50, thousand are you vitamin d a day you may develop vitamin d toxicity nobody's gonna take forty thousand or fifty thousand this is why as i said uh different experts endocrinologists internal medicine specialists family doctors they recommend different doses i see personally anywhere between one thousand five hundred to eighteen thousand uh, are you per day because based on the medical books the safety margin for vitamin D is definitely large nobody's gonna take 40,000 or 50,000 this is why most uh, experts they go with anywhere between 7,000 to 10,000 a day personally I am taking 7 to 10,000 are you per day in the past four years there was an article published a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken, by San Diego State uh, University in the U.S. They had uh, basically come to the conclusion that to have a decent amount of vitamin D in your system, you're going to need about 10,000 RU a day. Even if you take 10,000 RU a day, usually based on those two books that I mentioned, toxicity, you are not going to see. Toxicity happens in 40,000 are you and 50,000 are you but I always say the amount of vitamin D you're gonna take depends how much you have in your system if you have a decent amount of vitamin D in your system like me actually the last time I checked my vitamin D level was September 2019 I had 145 I believe right and I have passed 150 because I'm taking 7 to 10,000 a day so if you have a decent amount of vitamin D in your system, definitely you can keep that one maybe with two to three thousand. But if your vitamin D level is low, let's say you have low level vitamin D, you have 18, 29, 30, definitely with 2,000, 4,000, it's going to take a long time to get there. That's why most experts, they say 7,000 to 10,000 are you a day. It's definitely safe and is going to basically help you to get that uh, normal blood level easily. Let's go with sources of vitamin D. Here are the sources of vitamin D. Let's go with food first. Cod liver oil. One tablespoon of cod liver oil is going to give you uh, about 1,360 uh, vitamin D. Fish, throat, three ounces is going to give you 600. Salmon, anywhere between three ounces salmon is going to give you anywhere between 400 to 550 IU. Mushroom, white mushroom, one cup is going to give you 700 IU. One egg is going to give you 45. Tuna fish, light one, three ounces is going to give you 40. Sometimes uh, some clients, they ask us, what about I take the vitamin D I need just from food and I don't want to take food supplements. Imagine you are going to have, let's say, 7,000 RU vitamin D on a daily basis just by having salmon. Do you know, do you know how much salmon you're going to need? You're going to need 1.2 kg, close to 3 pounds of salmon every day which is impossible right second source sun exposure if you check any medical textbooks they don't give you any specific number how much uh, vitamin D you make in the skin because it depends on many factors season definitely summertime you make more vitamin D than winter time of day Usually midday you make more vitamin D. It's interesting to know that if your shadow is uh, longer than your height, 
you don't make that much vitamin D. Cloud cover. A complete cloud cover can reduce ultraviolet type B by 50%. And also remember, ultraviolet type B cannot penetrate glass. So if sun is coming uh, through glass to your place, to your apartment, and you lie down on a couch, and you say, I'm going to make some vitamin D, I am afraid it's not going to happen. Type of skin. Usually, fair skin people, they make more vitamin D than uh, dark skin people. Sunscreen. If you are using any sunscreen with sun protection factor 8 or more, they block ultraviolet type B and equator. The further away you live from equator, the less vitamin D you will make. As I said, if you check any medical books, you don't see any specific number that they're going to give you that how much you make from sun. But a few studies show that if you expose your face and arms midday to sun, no air pollution, not, be, not from behind the glass, uh, you can make anywhere between 10,000 to 20,000 are your vitamin D. And finally, food supplements, which they come in two forms, D2 and D3. This was about vitamin D, how your body can make vitamin D, blood levels, toxicity, and food sources. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the benefits of vitamin D and drug interaction. I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss the videos that we post on a regular basis on CSSN channel, you can subscribe to our channel. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.